Welcome back, Drifters. So today, we're putting an oil catch can on the BMW. We're getting rid of that stupid CCV system, Cyclone, whatever you want to call it, and we're putting an actual catch can on. All the parts and tools used in this video will be located in the description below, so if you're looking for any of that kind of stuff, it'll be there for you when you need it. So let's get on with the install. We know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Daily Drift. So this little sucker here is the uh, the CCV. It attaches under here, and these things are prone to going out. This is why we're doing the catch can. Um, and this is what we're deleting. But when we remove this, we need to make sure that we plug up any holes that we're no longer using, such as the big one that's behind this. When you remove it, it looks like this. There's this big giant hole here. So we have to have a way to fix that. That's where that rubber expansion plug comes into play. And we're basically gonna put it in here and seal this off to where it's no longer going to leak. Now this is the M50 intake so it's slightly different. You can see this one over here you've got the ICV attached and then you've got a place for the CCV. This one didn't come with one and it has a completely different setup. It has vacuum ports in different locations so I'm not going to go over exactly what it's like doing it on this but you kind of get the idea of how it works. So this is your dipstick tube and on the bottom you got this hose and it's going to run to your normal CCV valve and that's what we're deleting so in order to fix this we don't want this leaking because it's just a big giant vacuum leak so we're basically going to take this little plastic plug here and we're just going to plug it off so it'll be something like that when you're done with it you can see that's going to prevent any kind of vacuum leak and you know every now and again you might want to take a look at it just make sure it's not cracking because these rubber fittings sometimes they wear out but that's what you do to fix this problem so this plug is just a expander plug uh, this one is from an inch and a half to an inch and five eighths I believe the diameter of the hole that's got a plug is an inch and three eighths, so this should work perfectly. So this is what the plug looks like. If you see in there, it's basically just this rubber plug with a nut on top. We're gonna push it as flush as we can and then tighten down the nut. This will create a nice seal and it should prevent any future leaks or any problems. Um, and then that way now we're not worried about that big giant hole in the back of the intake. So that's how that works. So this is how you would install it if you're just doing the plug the way that it is. You just basically force it in the hole you tighten it up, it expands and creates a seal. Now, I was a little bit worried about this because there's a bolt and there's a little washer, so I did something a little different. Okay, so what I did here, I used some of this plastic weld and basically I took out all the pieces. I used my razor blade and cut out a little piece of plastic from the top of a brake part cleaner. Uh, I put that on top over the hole and I used the JB weld basically to put it in place and I filled the hole in the middle, so this would just be one solid plug. Because it used to have this, there's a little o-ring on there, it goes through there, goes through these washers, but I don't trust that it's not going to leak, and this is like the perfect size. It's an inch and a quarter and it fits in there basically perfectly, so as long as it's a solid rubber plug, it shouldn't leak. So I trust this more than I trust having these open threads on the other end, because you never know. So anyway, just my own little thing, should be nice. So after that, all I did was I took the plug and I basically stuck it in the hole. That's simple. So if you look in there, you can see there's three little vacuum fittings. There's two small ports for where these things can be hooked up in one large one. It doesn't really matter because they're all just pulling vacuum. Uh, the key is just to make sure you put the small ones on the small ones. So one's fuel pressure regulator and one's for this little check valve thing, okay? On yours, you might have a T going off to another canister but the key is that you just want one of these ports going into there so that way you know that you've got it secured, no leaks. But then we have to have a line that goes into this big port. This big port goes to a sensor. So under the intake, you'll see there's a sensor back here, this guy. This little guy down here, this is the one that runs to the big hose. And it's got a hose that runs up into a U. This is the one that we're gonna end up teeing into. So this one, the way this is gonna work is we're gonna cut this into pieces where we're gonna have this T, which is gonna go in. This is gonna go to our sensor. This side's gonna go to the intake like it normally would. And then this end, we're gonna have a hose that comes out that goes into our catch can. This is gonna be for the out. Because this is gonna be pulling the vacuum, which is gonna suck the air through the catch can, which is what's gonna create that basically suction from the valve cover acting like a PCV. Catch can's gonna separate all the oil and all the water vapor and the stuff that we don't want in the air and then send clean air back through the intake. So that's how it's gonna work. One problem with this setup is that it may end up throwing a code, and if it does, the other option is to just vent it to the atmosphere. 
And lastly, don't forget to attach the fuel pressure line that goes from the dipstick to the intake. So if you look on this catch can, it's nicely labeled. You can see here it says out, and over here it says in. Uh, basically, that's just, obviously, it's gonna let you know what sides for what. I mean, for a cheap Amazon part, I think I paid, I think I paid $25. I'm gonna put a link in the description. It's actually decent for what it is. It's just a hollow can. There's a little O-ring on here to seal it, and then there's a little dipstick. It's got two baffles in there, so that should help with catching all that nastiness and creating condensation to help collect all the gunk. It's not perfectly machined, but for 25 bucks, you can't beat what this is. You even get a little, you even get a little uh, dipstick there. I noticed the dipstick didn't come with an O-ring, so that's why I bought a spare set of O-rings just because I don't want any vacuum leaks or any possible issues with that. Um, so I would always suggest getting extra set just in case. You never know. Um, and especially if you order a different catch can, they may not come with O-rings. So it's always good to have them anyway. So guys, all I'm doing now is I'm taking this piece here and I'm heating up around the rubber here to kind of get it loose. Um, and then I'm gonna take this little top off so we can make this look pretty OEM. At least that's the plan. We'll see if we can do it. So we're just going to heat that up um, and then we're just going to be very careful because it's going to be hot. So now that it's hot, we're going to carefully try to twist this and work it loose. And if we're lucky, this thing should come out without breaking if we're very careful. Listen to that. It's like a dying seal or something. That's hot. All right, look at that. We got it. Cool, so it comes out like that. Now this is the old hose. Uh, I mean, I don't really need it. You probably don't either, but save it if you want to. So we're gonna run a hose from this to a reducer into our catch can. So I gotta go find out the size and then I'll be right back. So once I got the right size hose, I just popped the OEM fitting into the hose. It fit perfectly. So then we put a reducer on the hose to make sure it would fit on the catch can. And then we put it into the in portion of the catch can because that's where it's gonna be pulling from the valve cover. So when it comes to making the bracket, you got a couple of options here. I just used a little piece of flat stock, drilled a couple holes in it so that way I could fit the bolts through, bent it into a weird shape so that way it'll fit right over by where the uh, cruise control goes. And the one problem I had is when I did the single bracket, it had a little bit too much play. It was a little bit bouncy. You don't want that thing bouncing around because it's just going to be scratching stuff or rubbing up against stuff. You, you just don't want that. So I made a secondary support bracket. Basically, I just took a piece of metal and bent it until it would fit. And then I just bolted it from the one bracket to where the cruise control goes because there's a bolt right there. Real easy. And then lastly, all I did was I took the dipstick and I put a little O-ring on it so that way I could put it in there and make sure that we aren't going to have any vacuum leaks. Because you all know, I hate leaks. So there you have it. That's how you install a catch can on a BMW. It's a little bit different depending on your years, but you get the general idea. So if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing because we got a lot more coming in the next episode. Any bets on whether or not my battery's dead? It's been chilling under here for like the past like four months. See if we have any spark. Oh, yep, we got spark, all right. So that should be the rest of what's left on the list. Here we go. Will the W finally start for the first time? Find out in the next episode.